Welcome back friends. Today we're going to do a painting of three beautiful young ladies. Here they are. They're called The Warning. They're Allie and Pal and Danny. This will be an adventure for all of us because I haven't painted in 25 years so it should be an interesting thing. It could turn out to be a masterpiece. It could turn out to be a disaster. I guess we'll find out together. So, let's go ahead, get all of my new painting equipment into my hands, and let's see what happens. So let's come in closer, and we'll start the painting. Well, hello everybody. This is uh, gonna be my first time doing this, so it should be interesting. It's just gonna kind of be stream of consciousness right off the top of my head to people who are here for the painting part. Hopefully I'll say something interesting to warning fans who just kind of want to watch the painting happen and listen to me talk and hear some music in the background. Welcome to you as well. I imagine that'll probably be most of you. Um, anyway, I decided to do this painting because I've been wanting to start painting again. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I haven't painted since around 1995 I guess it is 96 and just wanted to get started and I had put this together in Photoshop and then thought man that would make a cool painting so there it was and I found a canvas in my closet that had been there for a long time and just went ahead and started so as far as the painting goes uh, I didn't get everything filmed right up front and Actually, my filming was a little hit and miss at the beginning because I had never done this, so trying to position the camera to where I wasn't blocking it and doing all those things, um, I made mistakes, obviously, uh, just as I made mistakes in the painting. Uh, I'll talk more about the painting as I go, but I want to give you a little background as well. Uh, I decided to go ahead and project it onto the canvas because trying to lay out a painting with three figures and the faces and all that and really wanting to make sure I got it laid out right, I went ahead and did it on my projector and projected it onto the canvas. What I didn't know was that it was going to cause a little bit of warping in the image, so it didn't lay it out exactly right. Um, I think it got a little wide as you can see in Danny's face right here. Uh, and two, I ended up widening out her cheek when I was painting and that came back to bite me later. <laughs> I imagine uh, you painters know how that goes when you're going along and you think, oh, this is going great. But then later on, after you think you've finished something, you realize, well, I laid that out wrong. Um, like here, her eye is a little wide and things like that. I didn't get the angle on her mouth and lips right. I'm going to be telling you as many things that I didn't do well as things that I think went well because having not painted in so long, it was uh, almost like learning to paint again. I've been working in Photoshop for so long that I really got used to being able to just pick up the mouth and move it a little bit if it was off and things like that. Um, I had multiple instances of having to paint over and repaint things, um, even on the lips here. I started out with one color and went along, they seemed okay, and then I realized they were a little red, so then I killed them down, and then uh, the colors, by the way, on the painting aren't going to match the color of the actual picture because, you know, white balance on the camera, things like that. Uh, it's not going to look exactly like it did in the room. Alright, so for instance right here on the lips. They actually started looking pretty good about here. And then I realized that the color just wasn't working for me. The lip shape was a little wrong. You know, here I am trying to bring in the cheek because I had messed it up. Um... I actually went back way later in the painting and really did a lot of work on getting the cheek in and all that. And like here, I got the lips a little too defined. You know, you don't want to have sharp edges. So I went ahead and just did what I could 
to start getting them a little more natural looking. But in so doing, I missed the angle that I needed on the right side of her mouth. And when I say right side of anything, I'm talking about looking at it, not her right side and things like that. And for instance, too, originally, you know, this, oh, oh, here comes the Evolve makeup. Looks like the makeup she wore in the Evolve video. A um, little heavy on the eyeshadow with that, that, almost that exact same color. So, hey, warning fans, you know what I'm talking about. So here I even got the mouth straighter, which needed to actually angle down on the right side. Um, I do like Danny's look in this. Uh, I really wanted to capture her her look because she's always got this I know something you don't know look. But it's very playful. Um, so, so I really wanted to try and capture that in the eyes. Um, obviously, with it being just laid out, I'm not going to capture everything right up front. This is really just a sketch in a way at this point. I'm just sketching everything, getting proportions right, trying to make sure that the groundwork is laid for when I go in and do all the detail work, but still trying to get some of the main points in, like the highlights, shadows, and I even uh, had to go in and all, add all that pigment to get some color to her. Now, boy, this is moving fast. <laughs> Not giving me time to say everything I want to say, but we'll come back to Danny anyway. Uh, so on Ale here, the original picture I had to work from was a really low resolution picture. So it made it hard to start with there because I liked the shot itself, but couldn't find anything with a high enough resolution to give me details. Um, and two, as I laid this out, it was before Ale had cut her hair. Uh, this is a good... Well, maybe she had cut her hair at this point, but I hadn't decided that I was going to do it with her hair shorter because she ended up cutting it even more later. So when I laid this out, I had that in mind and thought, okay, well, I'll shorten her hair some, but, uh, you know, but I started it so long ago, I think it's been three or four months, and the face that I was painting there, I ended up not actually keeping. Uh, it was kind of weird I would that's why I made it go really fast on the painting there because I painted that face multiple times I got it all laid out I couldn't get the eyes right couldn't get the mouth and lips right and I just kept thinking if I just had a better picture so as I'm doing all this their album comes out and a whole bunch of promotional pictures and things from the videos gave me better pictures to work with so as I was painting this painting, um, because I work in layers and things have to dry, and I was, of course, learning as I went and working after work, you know, painting after work, usually about three or four hours at a time. Um, I, they kept changing how they looked and things like that. Uh, Paulina here has the dark hair and had dyed blonde underneath. So I did that when I initially laid this out. As I'm going through the painting, um, she dyed her hair kind of that auburn color that it is now. Actually, it was really red to start, and then it got toned down, and then she got it layered. And every time I would think, okay, that's what it's going to be, she'd go, oh, I'm going to cut my hair. So then I needed to adjust because my whole focus on this was to get it done in time to take with me to seeing them in Daytona at Rockville, which happens in just a few days. So I finally finished the painting, um, but it was after making adjustments to try and have it current. So even though her hair looks black here, it will end up being the right color, or at least the right color at some point. <laughs> um, now for her face, Paulina, from the time this picture was taken to now, her face has actually changed. Um, it's subtle, but things like her her nose and her cheeks and all, uh, she's, 
with maturity comes losing a little bit of like baby fat in the face and things like that. She didn't have a whole, you know, I'm not saying she was fat. Don't even go there. I'm saying that everybody has, you know, kind of baby fat in their face as they, when they're young. And then as you get older, your face slims down and things like that. So when I did this layout, it was this face. Later in the painting, you'll see that she put out a picture that I thought was perfect and matched this angle. So I was able to, you know, go over it, but her face had changed at that point. So I was adjusting to the new look that she has. So her chin got, well, her jawline and all got a little more angular and, and things really, really gave a nice shape that earlier on made her face a little more round. Now it's a little more angular. And um, all three of the girls just seem to get more model-esque with age. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Uh, and as when we get back to Allie, um, I'll have lots of comments on that because she is the one who has changed probably the most. So here also, um, Paulina had changed the way she does her makeup a little bit. And that also changed how I ended up doing her face. As far as the painting goes, for all you people that are here about the painting, although, you know, the comments on face changing and things like that, that's all relevant. Uh, as far as the painting goes, I, of course, since I was learning to paint again, basically, um, I do work in oils, obviously, and I, I had, I think the paints I used back when I used to paint were thicker than what I use now. It was interesting working with these, and I remember why I hate working on regular canvas as opposed to more of a, a smooth canvas. And I think I'm actually going to go to working on board from here on out because then I can get more of the details, but the brushes don't flow as well over the texture of the canvas when it's rough. Um, at this point, I had realized that I had her way too pale, and comparing her to Danny's color, I had to get some color in her face to where, you know, I, I wasn't doing all the girls at the same time, so obviously skin tones, if I didn't mix the paint exactly right, it was going to get different. And it did. Uh, I had to make skin tone adjustments all throughout this painting because I I was still learning and trying to mix the paint um, I, and I tend to mix on canvas quite a bit which is oh, a, a real no-no in some ways I've learned so much about painting watching YouTube videos now to try and figure out what I was doing wrong <laughs> but but I, I figured a lot of it out. Um, Paulina's mouth, I fought with constantly because I could not get the lips to look quite like I wanted them to. Um, you know, I thought that this was going really fast, or, or I thought it was going fast, but seemed to drag on until I just started trying to talk over it and get everything out that I want to say. Now I realize it's going really, really fast. So. Uh, I wanted to keep it down to just a couple of 25-minute segments, so I had to do it this way. Now, <laughs> couldn't even get to the base in that amount of time, but I come back to the base in a minute. I just basically there was laying out the undercolor of the orange so that I could build the highlights and shadows on top and did it with some turpentine, well, not turpentine, uh, mineral spirits mixed in. Uh, I did a lot of mineral spirits with all the layouts so that it would dry fast enough for me to paint on top of. Um, and, you know, one of the things that drew me to this picture was the leather, the leather coat and all that, which I am sure that uh, they only buy their leather from places that use cows who have committed suicide or died of old age. Um, that's just the kind of people they are, I'm sure. <laughs> but the leather really drew me to this. Um, who knows, maybe they died in cage fights could be cage fighting cows which I think we would all pay money to see that 
or or not. <laughs> I think, but uh, anyway, so I'm getting sidetracked, just my mind wandering. All right, so back to the bass. Um, laying the bass out, I, I knew the strings were going to be the last thing because obviously they overlay everything. So I had to lay that out, and then this will be part of me telling you where I was screwing up. Uh, I got the wrong angle on the pickups on the layout, and it ended up haunting me down the line. Um, there you can see the mineral spirits running a bit from how thin I have them just to lay out the basics and get the light and shadow to where I knew, you know, once you start painting, you can't see your pencil marks anymore. So you need to have it to where you can at least tell how your layout was. Um, and that's what I was doing. And with it being leather jackets, I didn't have to be too precise. It's not like a face where if it isn't laid out the exact proportions and all that, you're going to be able to tell. Uh, so I had some freedom on the jacket, jacket to do some layout stuff, but I was still trying to keep it fairly accurate. All right, and here... Um, the picture on the left looks much bluer because it was just, it looked fine for computer, but for the painting, not so much. It was just so blue. Uh, so I toned it down to make it a little more leather colored and still have the blue in there, but a little different color blue. Um, and then all of these textures were going to be obviously layered because Whenever you're painting in and trying to get the light and dark to, to have some sharpness to it, you have to wait for things to dry in between to a degree so that you're not just making mud in the paint, which I did quite a bit. Um, but I knew that I could go back after it dried and add in some of the detail, which is what I'm doing on the sleeve there. I figured I would lay out the rows and get them... To where they were laid out you know at least be able to see the segments and then the last thing i would do on the jacket would be add the highest highlight you know the brightest highlights and then the darkest shadows to really sharpen it up um the zippers uh i figure it's a painting they don't have to be perfect uh i love photorealistic paintings i i will probably do more of them when i'm working on board but working on canvas, it's a little hard to get some of the tiny details that I really wanted to get. And I don't work very thick. So the uh, texture of the canvas really comes through. Um, not that I want it to. Okay, here we go with the base. I was trying to get a, a richer tone to the whole thing and then get the darks laid in towards the edges to start giving it some contour and give me a place to build from because I figured I would do the darks first and then I would do the light on top as I went and get some of the orangey color in which is what I'm doing there um, I knew that this would be about a four or five step process now later once I've got a little more painting under my belt I'll probably get better about doing it so all you painters out there please don't uh, judge me too harshly I truly was learning to paint again as I went and remembering all the things that I needed to do differently but just hadn't really acquired the skill again yet alright and on here the same thing with the blue in the jacket you know trying to tone it down a little because I knew I'd be killing it down and then the fingerboard or the fretboard on the base um you can't really see it on there, but I figured that it probably had a grayish, umberish kind of tone to it, depending on what kind of use wood they use for the fretboard. So I went ahead and threw that in as I was going, just to give it a little um, depth and realism. Uh, of course, the easiest jacket to paint was going to be Danny's, because there are no zipper showing, nothing like that. So the layout on it was going to be simple. I was able to go through fairly quick. Um, actually, the laying in the jackets was probably the fastest part of the whole painting because I had worked on Paulina's and then I thought, well, let me 
lay in all this. And this probably took me about uh, 30 minutes to an hour. All right. Now we are to Paulina's face, which I had refined quite a bit. Um, I did not get everything filmed, as you can tell, because it jumps here and there. And sometimes I just didn't... I just wanted to start painting when I'd finished work and not have to worry about setting everything up to film. And two, I had fought with so many things that I didn't figure you needed to see me just paint over a face, paint it again, paint over a face, paint it again. Um, so if you notice on Paulina's face, look at the angular, you know, the higher cheekbones, the, her chin has a little more round, uh, not roundness, but it comes down to it. She just, her chin actually got a really nice shape once her jawline and all started thinning down and getting more angular. Um, so that's how that went. Now we are all ready to the sleeve again and trying to get some of the detail in. Um, sorry that I haven't been able to talk as much about warning stuff, but the painting is going so quick that I really haven't been able to wax poetic or, you know, come up with any little um, fun facts, as Danny would say. Because I was planning through this whole video to go, hey, fun fact. But I hadn't really had, had a chance to. <laughs> so, anyway, and uh, for people watching for the painting, uh, fun fact is just something Danny says quite often. Actually, all of them do. Uh, so, on the painting here, you, you don't see it as much in the detail what I'm doing there, but I was laying in the underlayment of the shadow so that when I brought the highlights on top, that it would be a subtle uh, texture. And this too is when I started refining the darkest blacks, which I really should have been mixing in some color more with the black. Uh, I tried to do that some. There were a lot of painterly things that I wanted to do but when I laid out the painting, it was laid out almost in an, uh, not cartoony way, but um, kind of like you'd see a detailed anime or graphic novel or something. It didn't have all of the underlying colors that a portrait would have. And I really wanted to do those, but at this point, my skill level was <laughs> to the point that I thought I may screw up the painting trying to do those things. Um, and it had already, I was already so far into this in time that I decided I was going to keep it more of that, um, I, I really don't know how to phrase it, but it, it doesn't have as much of the color depth where you have a lot of the greens and the blues and things like that in the faces. And it was a little smoother, you know it had more of an anime style to it so it it allowed me to not have to go so far into the palette but also you know it, the next paintings I do will have a more realistic look to them I believe this one I, I'm fairly happy with okay so uh, all of that texture was actually very fun to paint um, and trying to get into the base I didn't want to just make the, the wood tone say, okay, well, this is just a wood tone base and it's got swirly stuff and I'll just kind of paint whatever I feel like and that'll be good enough. I wanted it to actually be fairly close to the wood tone and the, the actual grain and everything in her base because I think it is a beautiful base. Um, I... I I really am happy that she hooked up with Spectre because they seem to be doing her right. Uh, and being the youngest Spectre artist has, has really been cool that she was able to have that distinction. And now to have a base named after her as well when she's, well, I guess it was named after her when she was 15. Uh, that's pretty amazing. 
So anyway, I wanted to do justice to the bass. And so, if you'll notice, I went through and tried to get the uh, little knot holes and things all where they go, try and get the different types of wood put in. At this point, I'm trying to get it, you know, close without having to do too many layers. But as I was painting, it was getting kind of muddy. And the base that's in the picture on the left, I ended up, it was from the really low resolution photo. So I finally found a good resolution photo of the base that you'll see after I had done all this, I went and put in a better resolution. And it'll be obvious when you see it. Um, doing the knobs was interesting because you can't see it all on screen because the, the other base shows the bottom part. But the, the third knob down there at the bottom is a dual knob. So it's got an upper and a lower volume. You know, it, both parts turn. That's why there's two different lines. So I was trying to pay attention to detail, like doing the EMG X pickups. But as I figured out as I went, uh, my pickups were not laid out correctly. They, they were angled wrong. The middle one started to angle up, which made the, the saddle where the strings sit down at the bottom not look in line, and it got even worse as I painted. Uh, so, anyway, the oh, and adding the highlight on that base really made it jump out. Okay, so now we're to Ally. Um, the face that I had on there that I had painted earlier, I painted over that face three times trying to make it work, and I never got it to where I liked it. She started looking Asian, and then this color, and then the eyes were not matched up right. Uh, it was one thing after another, and then I found this picture of her. It was a black and white, so I went ahead and colorized it. But to me, it just looked like Ally, because her look is so different in all the different pictures of her that I was trying to capture the model-esque features on her face and her lips, because she has amazing lips as far as the, the upper lip is a nice Cupid's bow, but very full. But in some pictures, it doesn't look that way. Uh, it varies picture to picture, but this one I thought was the best example of how she looks kind of in between the really made up, you know, um, I guess more modelly look and her natural look. And as you can see, at this point, she had cut her hair again. Uh, so these pictures were for... I believe choke I think they came out around the time they released no it wasn't choke it was later than that you know what I think these may have come out not too long before the actual CD so I took this picture and started started working on it um, don't know if you can notice but I got her eye too high up on the right side and ended up having to bring that down and reshape it later. Uh, but getting all the colors to where they matched up with Danny's face, that, that took some doing. Um, but this was going way better than the other one. Still don't have her lips right. They were close, but I just, I sat there and painted over those lips probably six, seven times trying a little bit on the ends, making, uh, I think at this point they were a little narrow. I needed to widen out at the corners. So I did that as I went on. And you won't see every bit of that. Uh, there I am trying to get the eye shape right because <laughs> uh, I decided that her looking off camera was actually more interesting than her looking at us like um, Danny and Pow are. I almost felt like it, it added some story to the painting and you want your paintings to have a story to them. Uh, you know, wonder what this person's thinking or that person's thinking. Um, since Allie is the quietest one of the bunch, although lately she's been doing pretty good in interviews and really talking more, um, 
I thought it would be interesting if she just had that look off. Um, and and I'm happy with that choice. So trying to get the eyes in, of course, you don't want them just white. You got to have the shadows and the eyes and all that to give them roundness. And and once I started started getting that done, and that's a lot of what I learned better as I was watching videos. Um, I have watched a ton of painting portrait videos. Uh, also was able to get her nose much better this time because uh, although right here uh, it's a little narrow on the left nostril it needs to come out a little bit more and it does eventually as I start really refining. Alright here I'm finally laying in the hair and I was going off three or four different pictures for her hair because as I was working on the painting she cut her hair again changed how it laid um, and I couldn't decide if her hair was black or more of a brown and in different pictures that looked different colors so early on I had it a little more brown but then I didn't like it so I went back and worked on that you'll see it in a little bit all right now the zippers on her jacket that's a whole nother thing uh, I went and found a better picture of that jacket uh, I actually redid the picture that I was working with later so where I had laid out some of the highlights and shadows they changed as I went because I found better resolution pictures to work with so her jacket was one of those things that all the highlights and everything changed and so I had to go and make some adjustments but luckily I wasn't too far into it at that point all right so now we are back to the base um, I had gotten the general stuff put in but it was looking flat uh, now her base shows up in different lighting in different ways sometimes it captures all of the texture and and highlights and shadows of the wood and other times it looks a little more flat brown but I really wanted to get the shine to it and the depth of the stain so I had to add in a lot more of the orange burnt sienna kind of highlights knowing that I would still be adding more you know by the end but this was starting to really give me the, the texture that I needed um, boy I have already been going a half an hour and it just does not feel like it maybe it does to you all but I just feel like I'm flying along okay so now I am getting the highlights all into where the base has the roundness, trying to refine the EMGX, but not make it so pristine that, that it looks out of place because, you know, with the painting being not smooth photorealism, you don't want just certain things in it to be photorealistic to where they look out of place. All right, now here was another challenge. Uh, you can't really see it that well, but there's scotch tape down either side of the neck so that when I, I wouldn't have to worry about painting over the edges. Um, as you can see, I was having trouble, and if you look at the frets on the left side, the angle is different than what I ended up with. Um, a lot of this has to do with the fact that I didn't always have it up next to the painting. As I was going, it was sometimes laying down and so I couldn't see things as clearly as I do now watching it played back on here. Uh, I see so many things that I didn't get right when I put them side by side and basically the same size. But while I was painting, I couldn't see them. Um, you know, it's just part of painting. Uh, there's a lot of hindsight in paintings of, I wish I had done this, I wish I had done this better, you know. All right, so here I am trying to get a little more of the depth into the texture on her jacket. And her jacket, I think I ended up finding a better resolution file of as well. Um, but really trying to get that scaliness in there. And I'm going to be going through on the zipper too and adding highlights more in a bit because it, there we go. It, it still needed to have a little shine to it. Uh, 
this was actually a whole ton of fun learning to paint again and and seeing if all of the things I had been doing in Photoshop for the last you know 20 years would translate to oil painting and a lot of them did uh, the biggest problem I had of course was not being able to just pick things up and move them when they were a little bit off you just have to paint over it and do it again uh, that it was a pain in the ass all right now we're getting to the texture on Danny's coat, which was much more subtle. So I figured I'd lay in all the shadows and everything first, of course. Um, I brought in the, the tail of it some because I had redone it in the picture to make it look better. Then to get the texture without it ha you know, being so obvious, I stippled it with little tiny dots all over and then would just lightly go over them to smooth them out just a little bit to where it had the texture that you can see on the left. See there, you can really see the dots that I'm putting in and I'm just trying to let them, you know, smooth onto the canvas and not just be a bunch of dots. Uh, and I think I actually pulled it off pretty well. It, it came out looking pretty leathery when it was all said and done. Um, I definitely learned a ton while I was painting this. And it's funny that jacket that Danny's wearing has made multiple appearances in their pictures and things. Uh, I actually love the fact that when you look at their pictures and things or, or videos, concerts, that they share so many clothes. I think that that's kind of a testament to them not squandering money because you know, with Patreon and all that, you know, you're basically giving the band money. You don't want to see them squandering it. If they're using it, you hope that they'll use it for something uh, that makes sense. And I've never seen them do something that I didn't think, oh man, that, that was a good buy. Okay, here it is. You can see I had laid out the original sleeve, had a straight highlight. But when I did the new jacket, it had whole different highlights. And this is where I started fixing those problems. And here comes a spot of seeing it next to it I realized where my mistake was I didn't angle the zipper right which you wouldn't think well it's not a big deal it's just a zipper but when I back off on the painting in a little bit you'll see that it doesn't match the angle of the zipper on the other side so it doesn't look like it's right it, so I ended up um, not sure if I filmed it but I ended up painting over the right side of the zipper and re-angling it later. Uh, okay, there you can see the two zippers side by side and they don't match at all. And they really should be pointing at each other. Uh, it's a little thing, but it's the little things that make paintings. Um, to me, uh, a lot of times if you're doing abstract and things like that, of course, you're not gonna have all the little details and all. Uh, and it's the feel of the painting, but when you're doing photorealistic or at least close to realistic, the details matter. And if they are off, it's pretty obvious. Okay, so here just cleaning up the zipper, trying to make it good and get all the different textures in. Um, this, this painting was almost like a, a class in learning to do texture and, and you know catching highlights on different materials it it was it was something um, but I enjoyed doing it because for me my painting uh, routine is basically set up hit play on an Amazon playlist and sit and sing for four hours while I paint uh, just turn the music way up and just sing like I would if I was doing uh, concert or something I guess you know uh, for those of you who don't know I also write and record music and play and sing and singing is one of my main instruments so it gave me a lot of practice too which was great because at the same time I was also filming uh, my Narcissista video and some of the others and working on several different videos um, I think I was even doing dust to dust at this point um, on the early stages of the painting. 
All right, now for the background, uh, you notice the background changed from the in initial idea. I got to where I didn't like that background at all, and this had more of an industrial feel to it. On the left, I didn't end up getting that feel as much as I would have liked. Um, it ended up a little more blendy and things like that, but in the end, I was okay with it. If I wasn't on a deadline, I might have gone ahead and taken more time and really worked on getting the background to have the same look as it does on the left. Okay, here, obviously, I was using scotch tape because the strings, uh, you freehanding those strings would have been a pain in the ass. So I had to do the three strings so I didn't overlap my white paint um, and then let those dry. And then eventually... I was going to go back in and do the other two strings. And it just ended up being the way that it, and it took them forever to dry. So, so now moving on to Allie's hair, I, at this point, was trying to get rid of a little bit of the brownness. But I, 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 I kept fighting with myself over what color to do it. So... It still has a lot of the brown in it, but I figured I would lay it in like this and then go back and add the black shadows and that would bring out the depth and get rid of some of the brown. So that is what I did. And if you notice this right there, I tried to widen out the side of Ali's lip and get it wider like it is in the picture. All right, here I had, I did not film me getting, um, Pal's hair, the different color. It's a lot redder here than I intend it to be, but this is kind of the under painting of it. And then trying to get some of the texture into the background, not worried about the edge of the hair because I'm going to be painting on it more. Um, and right here, started laying in the shadows. Uh, I didn't get them on the top as much yet because I come back to it a little later after it dries. And if you notice, her face shape is very different because I'm using the other picture for it. Um, but getting in the highlights and all that and starting to get the texture in her hair made the biggest difference. And, you know, picking up colors from the background in her hair as well uh, because the light from the background would reflect into her hair a bit. Um, so... You just have to keep all that in mind. And then she's got a little bit of magenta to her hair as well. It, it was, I think her hair color actually changed in the couple months after she did it, this color. It really changed because I started off with it lighter and then it just seemed to get darker and darker as the color faded. So um, I ended up incorporating that towards the end. All right, now we're back to Allie's hair, who... Um, okay, and here's a good thing. Now, when you're painting black on a painting, the way I was doing it, I was doing it wrong. Because they always say fat over lean, which means, you know, if you're going to thin your paint down, do it on the under part. And then on the top, you should have the thicker paint and things to try and keep the, you know, paint dries a little shiny if it's done right. And every color dries differently. So in the end, the black tended to look really flat uh, right here it doesn't look too bad but when it dries it's going to get flat again because I was using mineral spirits mixed with it to get the smoothness so I will address that towards the end of the video um, right now as far as Danny's hair went I was loosely staying with kind of the shape of her hair but not too worried about it because she moves her hair around so much that it's, you know, one style is not necessary. She's constantly pulling it from one side to the other or just, you know, flipping it up, whatever she does. So I wasn't too worried about that. But her hair is pretty blonde right now. And I wanted to get the texture in there. But as I was painting, I realized when I got done, I got it too light. Now... It's hard to go back at this point, you know, and just go, let me wipe all that off somehow 
and have it work. So I decided to go ahead and finish doing all the highlights and then go in later and do a wash over the entire thing with some burn umber or something like that to, to just a thin wash to tone it down. And then I could start adding in shadows and all to bring it, bring it back some. Um, same thing on the right, you know, with that light background, it kind of afforded me opportunities to not have to do too much blending, you know, have a little bit of the light coming through. All right, so, oh, sorry, I'm painting at the top of the screen. All right, now, when I painted the strings, they were white. I mean, just straight up white. Um, I didn't go into any of this because with it being wet, it would have been really hard. And I ended up with the strings too wide, especially the, the one second from the right. It was way too wide. So I was having to go through, and strings are wound. So they have a texture to them, basically lines all the way up. So I used the canvas to give me that texture by just kind of lightly going over it. And then went ahead and painted the shadows in to get the roundness of the string. Then went through and added highlights to try and give it a little bit of edge on the highlight side. Um, obviously you can see I'm not very precise and every once in a while end up getting paint where I don't want it to be and having to fix it. Um, this was about the point I realized that the frets were wrong, but it was too late to really try and fix them. Uh, if I was doing this on a commission or something like that, it would be different. But since it was really just for me, and, well, hopefully for the warning, if they would like this painting, um, then I figured it was okay. I also realized here I had gotten the uh, pickup too wide. So I was going to have to go in and fix that. But I really liked the way the saddle went. Um, getting all of the details of where the screws go, the little segments within it, and not making them all exactly the same because the saddle is adjusted to tune the strings, the, the intonation on the bass. And so they shouldn't be all perfectly the same. Um, now you can really see how far off that middle pickup is. And when I realized that, I was like, do I just leave it? Uh, eventually, you see, that was one of the last things I fixed. Um, all right, here I am trying to get a little bit more depth into the base. Now, some of this, the depth might have come back if I varnished it, because blacks get richer as you varnish. Um, so... I hoped that that would be the case, but I wasn't willing to bet on it, so I went through and did a little more work. Uh, there I am trying to get things evened up a little, and then we got to the hands, and I don't know why I put the hands off more than anything. Uh, just didn't want to paint them. I, I hated the thought of going in and painting the hands. <laughs> I think a lot of artists have problems with hands and so you know and I knew I'd have to be painting around the fingers and the fretboard and the strings there was just no no easy way to get around it um, having to get around the hair and then also the background I had painted white and was taking forever to dry so I couldn't really put my hand down um, lots of little problems you can see where yeah right along there the fretboard had gotten wide in places. Uh, and up there, I still had to fix the strings. All right, now we were to the belt, which I had barely worked on. But the belt and the highlights to give the jacket a little more depth, they, they really became something. Um, I was very proud of those once I finished them because it turned out really about like I wanted it to. I mean, kind of how I pictured it in my mind. Uh, sorry I've been staying so much on painting stuff, warning fans. I, I really was wanting to get to <laughs> more of the other stuff, but I'm just running out of time. I mean, shoot, I'm almost three, three minutes, I think, done from done. 
Okay, so here I'm just really starting to refine everything. Now, towards the end, I didn't get my last day of filming done because I lost the footage. Uh, I had done a lot of work. Like, you didn't get to see me. Some of the footage I could have sworn I shot and could not find it, which was laying out the background. Um, things like that. Wow, the jacket, I think, there is really starting to pop. And when I... When I varnished it, or not varnished yet, but when I did stand oil over the entire thing to give it a better coat, all the blacks just richened up and all the colors pop more. Okay, here I am refining the eyes on Paulina because her eye makeup has changed. And she does very refined makeup on her eyes now, more so than she did in those pictures. Um, I think I went in and added a little more shadow in the whites, but I'm not sure it shows up here. All right, now I had gotten her hair color pretty close, but it needed some highlights just to give it some richness and depth. Um, once again, mixing in some mineral spirits to try and get some flow to be able to get the thinner lines. Didn't always work, but worked to a degree. And I actually, after I finished this section, I don't, I, oh, this is when I realized that her skin color was way different than the other two girls and that I was going to have to go and fix it. So I had to go and basically repaint her skin. Um, discouraging, but necessary because she was such a different color from the other two girls because I did not work on them all at the same time. I worked on them separately and I think I think uh, I laid in the color on her early on. But in the end product, which will be coming up soon, you'll see, you'll see that it's much better. Now, I would have loved to have gotten the colors in that you can see in the picture on the left. But since I hadn't done that on the other girls, I couldn't do that. Um, of course, it's kind of an amalgam of the original face and this face so it's not going to look exactly like the one on the left because I wasn't trying to make it do so all right uh, like I say I, I lost some footage so this will be the last footage you see before the end product um, I did a lot of going in and refining different things working on some of the faces a little bit more as far as just lips and eyes and getting some of the shadows in but here I was straightening up that pickup because I finally decided I couldn't live with it. <laughs> um, and here we are. That's the original picture, and that is how my painting came out. Now, the color is a little redder, I think, than the painting is in real life. And it's actually got a little bit of warp to it from the camera lens. Um, so that'll throw you off a little. But I thought, well, I'll zoom in. Just kind of show how it looks up close on each of the girls. I... And actually pretty happy with how it came out for my first try in all this time. So let me know in the comments what you all think. And I hope that you enjoyed the time you took to take this. And if you are still here, thank you for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you again. Bye.